Because I don't know what you do. Yeah, wrong part of it.
Well, good morning. And it's so great to see some faces that have been missing for a while. And we are so glad to have Carol back and Vaughn back and everyone else who hasn't been here for a while. We are glad to have you here. So good morning from wherever you are for a time of worship at Emmanuel High Church. Today is Sunday, June 25th, and it's the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And today we're celebrating our graduates and our milestones. Before we get started, here are our morning announcements. May is on vacation this week, and then Sandy will be on vacation next week. Thir the 29th through July 3rd. Uh, please use church email or contact Sandy before the 29th or me after that time if you need assistance for anything from the office. Change for change, start collecting your quarters, your dimes will be on July 9th and it's going to benefit clothe the kid. Um, and then also on the 9th, we will be having special music with our friends Bob and Jan Patetta. They'll be back on the 9th, and we'll have a second Sunday social to follow that. Our annual church picnic will be on the 16th, and it's going to be once again in the lower pavilion in Doyle's at the um, Doylestown Memorial Park. Um, Paul Royer will be leading us in music, and we're excited to bring him back. We're asking, this is going to be our first chance to have a covered dinner, uh, covered dish uh, together. So uh, the church will be providing the chicken, and we ask that you bring a covered dish, whatever you like, except for Nancy, you need to bring deviled eggs. Because <laughs> it's... <gasps> it's just never a, a carry-in without Nancy's deviled eggs. Um, and we're also asking you bring a table service and a uh, tablecloth with you this time. Oh, and here it is. I'm going to uh, start uh, a sign up right there for the picnic. After the picnic on that very same day, back at four o'clock, we will be once again hosting New Horizons in our cemetery, and that's always a fun time for all. So I hope you will come and invite your neighbors because it's really a fun time. It's a great place to be. And then our um, summer hymn sing will be on July 23rd. Tom and I will be, um, I guess it's called vacation. We will be uh, at Chautauqua as uh, pastors of the week for the UCC house there. And um, we'll have a hymn sing on the Sunday that we're gone, the 23rd. If any of you would like to be our MC on that day, please get a hold of me. I'm still looking for someone to lead worship. And we would love to have you uh, step up. Let's see. Vacation Bible School is July 30th through the 1st. And also out in the hall, Akron's Rubber Ducks. On the 20th, um, we're having a sign up there and a group will be going. So I hope if, if uh, you're able, you will sign up there and also invite your friends. Are there any other announcements for the good of the group? All right, then with that, let's take a moment to transition into our worship time. Each week we prepare ourselves for worship by reminding our minds and our bodies that even though some of us may physically still be in our homes, we're now gathered as the body of Christ and entering into holy ground. And we do this by relaxing and slowing down. Let's start with this morning's breath prayer, shall we? Let's place our right hand on our hearts, our left hand on our bellies, and breathe in through our nose and exhale slowly through our mouths. And as we inhale, wherever I go, Lord, and as we exhale, you are right there with me. Once again, wherever I go, Lord, you are right there with me. And one more time. Wherever I go, Lord, you are right there with me. 
All right, let's now turn to worshiping our God as we bring in the light of Christ and we listen to our prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord with all that you have. For God is with us throughout all our lives. Rejoice in the Lord at all times, in all places. For God was steadfast and loving to us all. Amen.
Mayer. Maybe seated. I forgot to say good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, as we hear the names of our graduates spoken aloud today and celebrate their accomplishments, let us also hear your voice calling each one present to receive a word of purpose and direction in life. We celebrate our students finishing a chapter in their history. May they continue from this day and this place to create outstanding stories that surround them every day and in all places they may find themselves. And so with friends and family who have gathered to encourage and support these graduates and others who have reached significant milestones, we welcome your presence of God. You are the one who has anticipated this moment from the beginning of time. Amen. Dear friends, listen to the good news. Christ came to give us new life, to redeem and heal our brokenness. We are made whole through his boundless love. Glory be to God. Amen. You may be seated. And now I'm going to invite Miss Helen to come forward. And you know what? I think you should be up here so you have the mic. All right. And I'm going to invite our graduates to come up. Andrew Wyant and Haley Porter are with us today and Rebecca Painting is um, not able to join us. Just, this is fine, yeah, right here. This is great. You ready, Helen? Mm -hmm. All right. We are gathered together today to celebrate the accomplishments of our recent graduates among us. More achievements yet to come. One part of your life's journey is complete. Now you will prepare to begin another phase that will take you to unimaginable places. As you prepare for your next journey, we hope that you will remember the ones that you let leave behind who have loved and supported you throughout the years. We give you a goodwill and love as you journey forth into the world. We thank you for the laughter and fellowship that you have shared with us and for a nation to continue the next journey. Remember the times that we all have shared with you. Use those memories as a beacon to guide you on your path. Don't look back longingly, but continue forward, using your memories to create a new path. We pray that God will give you strength and determination to develop new relationships that will help to strengthen and sustain your faith. Because we are made in the image of God, we have been blessed with free will to make choices and decisions. We pray that you make wise and rational decisions, always turning to God for help. God hears, God listens, God is always with you. Do not forget that. 
Always keep in mind that God is around, and if you turn to him, he will come. Just as Jesus commissioned the disciples to go out and spread his word to the, with the world, so do we commission you to do the same through the way you live your life. Always keep Christ in your heart. We send you forth with all our love, all our love, all our perseverance, and all of our support. We strive for only the best rewards that life has to offer you, and may the love of Christ shine through you. Christ is the light of all people. Let him shine in you during tough times and always keep that light alive. Let Christ's light shine all. Thanks be to God. Okay. Here we go. Congratulations. Nice shirt. Congratulations. Be seated. That was always the favorite part of my day because I've watched both of those two grow up since they were little. And it's nice to be able to see them to go on. And I don't know if the congregation knows as well as honoring them here. We also as a church support them through scholarships for the four years that they'll both be at Ohio State. So, that, so we can support them in our prayers and financially. So now we're gonna I'm gonna change to my milestone hat. And we have a whole box of milestones today. Okay. So right. if you would bear with us, some of them are not here today. Nicholas Baker graduated from Ohio State in law school. And at the end of July, he'll be taking his um, law degree or take, what's that called? Huh? Bar exam. Bar exam. Thank you. I'm like, I know it's a test they have to take. So he, and he already barring, passing that test, he already has a job. So He's also, okay. but he wasn't able to be here today. Okay. You so ready? we'll start in order. Oh, wait. Go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Big or little, life overflows with milestones if we recognize them. Noticing them, pausing to honor those times adds zest and color to our daily living. Milestones are hallowed moments. Milestones are to be remembered and honored. And now we recognize those among us who have reached new milestones in their lives. And I ask, as I, we call the names of those in the balcony, if you could send someone down to collect those milestones, I don't think I can run up the stairs that many times. That's all right, I'll, I'll take them, go ahead. So the first one, Aaliyah Fisher is, she got the good citizenship from the um, Doylestown Fire Dep or Police Department. Her teacher re turned her in for all the good work and good listening she did at school. Okay. And go ahead. Do you, there's a bunch of them in a row that okay, are all I'll upstairs. Do, then Jeff Kindle is got his driver's license, and Jeff instead of getting a milestone, Jeff is getting a never drive any faster than your guardian angel can fly. And that's a good message for the new kids driving to remember. And then Juliana and John, oh, Pedroza. John, help me with the name. Pedroza. I, I could go with Huck Reedy, but <laughs> they, the newlyweds are back and we have their- I'm gonna take these down. Okay. Then Alexander and Zach, Alexandra and Zach Barner just got married yesterday. So they're still- um, probably sleeping from the, would be my guess and they're not here today thank you congratulations paintings could not be here today but jillian painting is at a, a high university and she just got accepted into the school of nursing so she was very excited about that the next two are claire and callie wyant they both received student of the month at the middle school. Micah, you should have stayed down here because. <laughs> and Micah was inducted into the National Honor Society at Barberton. Great job, Micah. And Jer Jerry and Irv Wagner are um, 
celebrating their 65th, 64th wedding anniversary. And Roth and Nancy are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Very good. Congratulations. Andrew Carhoff was um, nominated as the top 15th prospect for the Summit County for baseball. Do you want to take it? I do. Yeah, for something for Zach after church. And Nathan Wyant got his letter for bowling as a freshman. So Nathan, or eighth grader, right? Freshman. I was right as a freshman. I thought I had that, but then I'm like, growing up too fast, and Nathan. And then um, Haley Almer, Almer was um, student of the month, and we'll give that to her. And James Almer received his black belt in Taekwondo. So we will give him that. I saved the last one. The Corinne and Anthony Walker and the family got a new home. And we use the message of build your um, build your home with Jesus in the middle. Congratulations. And while she's coming back, housekeeping wild, the song, the milestone song is going on. If the children would all come up front to go to this pew here so we can be ready to ring bells after the Matson song. Will you share with me in our commitment together? Reflecting the light of God's love, we see emerging in you the wonderful person God created you to be. We rejoice in the courage and growth that these milestones represent. May they be more than a private experience. May it be a sign of the encouragement that you continue to grow and shine using these new milestones to glorify and serve the Lord. Let's join together in our hymn of milestones.
Our first lesson today comes from Psalms for Praying by Nan C. Merrill, Psalm 86, verses 1 through 10. Listen now as the Spirit speaks. Give ear to my cry, O Comforter, and answer me, for I am sorely in need of you. Awaken new life in me as I yearn to do your will. Dispel the ignorance of my ways as I put my trust in you. You are the beloved. Be gracious to me, heart of my heart, for with you would walk, uh, I would walk all day. My soul is uplifted as I abandon myself into your hands, for you are kind and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear to my prayer, compassionate one. Listen to my heartfelt plea. In the time of trouble, I dare to call upon you, for you hear the cry of those in need. No one is like you, Almighty One. All of creation belongs to you. All the nations are under your authority, and one day they will acknowledge and reverence you. They will give praise to your sacred name, for you are great, and we are awed by the wonders of your world. You alone are the Most High. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Our gospel, uh, our second reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21, from the message. First, I'd like to say last week we read about three strangers visiting Abraham and Sarah, and they were told of God's uh, promise of giving them a son. But this week we fast forward to the story of Sarah's servant, Hagar, and her son, Ishmael. Listen now to the word for God's people. Sarah's baby grew and was weaned. Abraham threw a big party on the day Isaac was weaned. But one day, Sarah saw the son that Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham, poking fun at her son, Isaac. She told Abraham, Get rid of this slave woman and her son. No child of this slave is going to share inheritance with my son, Isaac. The matter gave great pain to uh, Abraham. After all, Ishmael was his son. But God spoke to Abraham. Don't feel badly about the boy and your maid. Do whatever Sarah tells you. Your descendants will come through Isaac. Regarding your maid's son, be assured that I'll also develop a great nation from him. He's your son too. Abraham got up early the next morning, got some food together, 
and a canteen of water for Hagar, put them on her back and sent her on her way with the child. She wandered off into the desert of Beersheba. When the water was gone, she left the child under a shrub and went off 50 yards or so. She said, I can't watch my son die. As she sat, she broke into sobs. Meanwhile, God heard the boy crying. The angel of God called from heaven to Hagar. What's wrong, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy and knows the fix he's in. Up now, go get the boy. Hold him tight. I'm going to make of him a great nation. Just then, God opened her eyes. She looked and saw a well of water. She went to it and filled her canteen and gave the boy a long, cool drink. God was on the boy's side as he grew up. He lived out in the desert and became a skilled archer. He lived in the Paran wilderness, and his mother got him a wife from Egypt. This is the word for God's people. May God bless all who hear it and who keep it. Will you pray with me? Open our ears, Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our will that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. This, I think, is one of the Old Testament's most interesting stories. It is in these verses that both Islam and the Baha'i faiths trace their origins through the union of Abraham and Hagar. The prophets Muhammad and Bab both claim Hagar as an ancestor. And Jewish scholars have, insert, have asserted that Hagar was actually one of Pharaoh's daughters. You may remember that Abraham and Sarah had traveled earlier to Egypt. And while there, Abraham lied to the Pharaoh saying that Sarah was actually his sister. And because of this, Sarah wound up in Pharaoh's harem for a short period of time. And Jewish lore says that during that time, Pharaoh fell in love with Sarah and gave her his daughter Hagar as a gift, saying this, it is better that my daughter should be a slave in the house of such a woman as this than a mistress in another house. Can you imagine that? It seems strange to us today, I think, to think that a father would just give his daughter away as a gift. Here's Pharaoh with a large number of wives and probably an even larger number of children. And remembering that at this time and even in some places still, women in general had a very little power or value and female offspring of a second or third wife probably had almost no value at all. So Pharaoh just gives his daughter to Sarah as a gift. And that daughter is Hagar. And then Abraham and Sarah and Le take up and leave, taking Hagar with them. And Hagar leaves all she's ever known behind, her home, her family, her friends, one time a princess, now a slave. But for a while, all is pretty good. Sarah treats Hagar well and all is sunny. Yet when Sarah finds that she can't conceive, a storm begins to brew. And she orders her young slave Hagar to sleep with old Abraham so that she and her husband can raise Hagar's offspring as their own. For Abraham is the head of the tribe, and it's incumbent upon Sarah to furnish him with a legacy. So she orders young Hagar to bear her a child, and Hagar does. Once a princess, but now a slave. However, when Hagar gets pregnant, she begins to get a bit of an attitude towards Sarah. Now the status tables have started to turn for it's bearing children that brings a woman worth. And momentarily, Hagar's flying high. 
But you see, Sarah will have none of it. What little power she has, she's not going to give it up to this, this foreign woman carrying her child. So Sarah, the Bible says, responds by beating Hagar to put her in her place. And by now, Hagar's had enough and she runs away. But an angel of the Lord tells her to return to Abraham and Sarah and that God will bless her with many descendants and that she was to name her son Ishmael, which means God listens. This is the part of the story where the Muslims trace their origins right here. And so Hagar does return and all is sunny a while for again for a while. That is until Sarah gets pregnant and has a son of her own. And then the clouds start to gather again. You see, Jewish law stated that the eldest son, regardless of the mother, would inherit all the father's property and become the spiritual leader of the family as well. And again, Sarah was not going to stand for that. So Sarah's resentment begins to burn again. And she started looking for reasons to get rid of Ishmael and his mother. So when Ishmael, now 13, starts to tease his younger brother, Sarah goes to Abraham and orders him to throw out Hagar and her offspring out of the camp. And so out she goes. A backpack of food and a canteen of water and don't let the screen door hit you on the way out into the desert. Once a princess of the Pharaoh and now the bearer and the bearer of Abraham's first son. And now on her own with a child to care for in the desert. And when the water runs out, Hagar leaves her son and goes off to pray and cry. You see, it seems she's forgotten God's promises to her in the midst of this full on crisis. Promises? Yes, promise one. Ishmael, just Ishmael, God listens. How could she forget that when her son's name is God's, God listens? Think how many times in Ishmael's 13 years of life, Hagar called him, God listens, shut the table. God listens, do your homework. God listens, go pick up your socks. But still she forgot. And she forgot the second promise, that he will make a great nation from her as well. Surely that means they're not going to die in this place. But you see, even though Hagar has forgotten, God didn't forget. And, Hag and God opens Hagar's eyes, we're told, and she finds a well, and they drink, drink deeply. You know, this story is not simply about people who lived 4,000 years ago. If so, why would we even keep telling it? It's also a saga that describes a state of being that almost, if not all of us, will experience at one time or another in our lifetime. And that's the state of exile. Exile. You know, times when we're forcibly removed from our old way of life and thrust into a new reality. It can happen as a result of divorce or financial hardships or being laid off from a job. Or it can happen even through some happy events, like when we graduate from high school or college or when our job moves us to a new place or when we retire or when our last child leaves home. Sometimes through death of a loved one or becoming a permanent caregiver, we're put out in that exile through circumstances beyond our control or by our own choices or those of others, we can find ourselves feeling alone in the desert, far removed from what our life used to be. And we wonder if God, is even listening to our prayers and will our lives ever recover and can we ever be happy again and yet our scripture this morning gives a resounding yes to these questions god hears our cries and opens our ears to the deep deep spiritual well 
that he created inside each and every one of us to keep us going during these stormy times. A deep reserve of faith and strength and courage to quench us as we work toward a new outcome. Without faith, we're on our own with only our small capabilities. But with God as our partner, our well is nourished and endless. And God promises us a legacy. Now, it might not look like what we thought it would, but God will put his blessing on us in our distress and open our eyes to see new possibilities that God puts before us. A new career, a new relationship, perhaps a new understanding that will be a blessing and a legacy to others for years to come. Some Jewish commenters, uh, commentators identify Hagar with Keturah, the woman Abraham married after Sarah's death, stating that Abraham sought her out after Sarah's death and they had more children together. Our good news for today is that no matter what, we're never really exiled. God hears us in our times of distress and promises that we're never, never alone. God gives us a deep well within us to ha handle life's even fiercest storms, and we are blessed. Graduates, may you never feel a time of exile on, on as you travel to your new adventures, but I hope you will remember that when times do get tough, wherever you go, God is right there with you. And so are we. And all God's people said. come down you can follow every dream but when it seems everything you believe never works out remember i'm right here for you when everything comes undone you belong to me you belong in the sun Till I see you again When you feel like no one cares And you're scared I'll be there This I swear Right to the end I'll always be Right here for you No matter what you
Money is a tricky thing. When we show it, when we allow it to control us and become the focus of our lives, whether it's hoarded or scarce, it is a problem. On the other hand, we can't live in today's capitalist world without it. Generosity is the solution. When you give, you reflect God's abundant love and caring through your gifts. As followers of Jesus, we are called to use our money to help atone and to bring justice and mercy and hope to the world we live in. Our morning offering will now be received. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Merciful God, accept our gifts, we pray, and bless now this morning's offerings that we might do your will in this place and in all the world. Amen. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. God of the impossible, this morning we pray for justice and peace and reconciliation. When the challenges seem too many, remind us of your resurrection power, Lord. And when the tasks seem overwhelming, remind us of the miracle of love. When apathy threatens us, Remind us of your vision of a whole world made whole. Help us to hold on to your promises that nothing is impossible through you. And help us live today as if your promises are already coming true. This morning, we lift to your healing presence, Dinah, Kay, Mark, and Anne. Lord, in your mercy. We remember Laurel, Carolyn, Lucy, Sally, and Paula. Lord, in your mercy. We lift Ronnie, Mike Young, Nanny, and Barbara. Lord, in your mercy. We remember Charlie, Diane, Larry, Ernie. 
and sue, Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you Connie Sutton, Renee Markovich, Todd, Christina Holby, and the Casto family, Lord, in your mercy. And we ask this morning for a special blessing upon Jeff Kindle and Micah Sutton as they embark on their adventure at church camp. Lord, in your mercy. Give us courage, Lord, to be your disciples. Let us be bold in our proclamation of your healing mercy in our attitudes and our actions. For we ask it in Jesus' name, our Savior who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise if you're able and join me in our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, verses 1, 3, and 4. And now may God's blessing rest on each one of you. May God's light shine on you and make your paths clear. May hope carry you through the challenging times and gratitude be your response when life is good. May your days be filled with curiosity and adventure. And may you discover the incomparable joy of living lives that bring glory and honor to our Lord. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you.